Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. It's higher than the mountains that I face It's stronger than the power of the grave It's constant in the trials and the change This one thing Watching on our live stream this morning, we welcome you as well. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all live very soon. All right. I do have some important things for you to remember on this day. Uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, we will not have the conversation with God and uh, time for prayer in that group on this Wednesday. Uh, that time period will be for our uh, church meeting. Please attend that if you have some interest in, the, in how we're moving forward. Uh, there is live meeting on Wednesday uh, starting at 630. And it's also going to be on Zoom. Okay, so if for some reason you can't attend, that will be available to you as well. Uh, it's been way too long. Time to reconnect. With that in mind, for our church family... The deacons will be hosting a potluck luncheon on June the 5th. That's what? Two weeks? Two weeks. So, 
not a lot of time to get, get your food all prepared and everything get ready to come. We're going to have a great time. Uh, the deacons invite you all to come. All right. Uh, we still are looking for that benevolence uh, director, uh, that physician. Please see Doug Goodermuth if you have some questions about that. He would be glad to fill you in some more about that as well. And thank you very much. For a call to worship, I invite you to turn to a, a, one of the songs in our hymnal, number nine. So if you will find your hymnal in front of you and turn to that, I invite you to at least to look at the lyrics. You may even choose to sing the lyrics uh, to this particular song. Excuse me here. So we get there on the right note. Shall we pray? O oh Lord, you are worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. In our limited capacity, we make every effort to offer what you deserve. Come to our aid and make this a time of worship memorable and meaningful. Work in our spirits, enlighten our minds, touch our inner resources, so that our response will display glory to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, we love you. O oh Lord, we worship you. Now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to have a seat at this time. In 1 Timothy 4.13, Paul urges Timothy to devote himself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. And so we make the public reading of Scripture a part of our um, custom that every Sunday we read a portion of a book that we might read, entire, read through entire books of the Bible together as a congregation. Good morning. I'm Mary Dobrinsky. This morning, our public reading of scripture comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, and Proverbs 9, 10 through 12. In 1 John, we read, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. 
because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. And in Proverbs chapter 9, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. May the Lord bless this reading of his word. Shall we pray together? O sovereign and almighty God, we approach you with humility and gratitude. We thank you for the many acts of your loving kindness. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your great salvation through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the strength from your everlasting arms. We thank you for the word that you have planted within us. We pray that it will produce an abundant harvest of righteousness. By your spirit, provoke us to heed it. Give us ears to hear it. Grant courage to obey it. We pray that the wisdom from your word will manifest your goodness and splendor in our lives, family, community, nation, and world. O oh Lord, now hear these requests. O oh Lord, extend your mercies and demonstrate your compassion for to those with various diseases, illnesses, and infirmities. We pray especially that you might be with Ruth Ann uh, Miller as she uh, uh, recovers from the dog bite and experience and faces the treatments. Lord, we pray that you might bring about, about healing. And Lord, we pray that you might be with all of us, meet our health concerns, relieve discomfort, heal during surgical recovery, reveal your presence, minister to the physical emotional, and spiritual needs of each one of us. We pray that you will touch the lives of our students, guard and guide Victor, Oprah, Daniel, Brooke, Claire, Raul, Aiden, Jake, Carolyn, Donna, Darcy, Holden, Jay, Teresa, Rebecca, AJ, Abigail, Tracy, and others that are in our midst. Give them success in the classroom. Draw yourself to each one. Accomplish your purposes within each life. Hide your word in their minds. Reveal your presence in the, at the business meeting on Wednesday. Give us a guide to us in our deliberations. May we bring honor to your name. Help us individually and collectively to maintain our financial commitment to the work and the ministry of our church. Give us sensitivity to the needs of the general fund, capital improvement fund, benevolent fund, and food pantry. Give us a spirit of generosity. Oh, Lord, thank you for each and every provision that you make available to us as an individual, and as a church. We pray for our nation. Forgive our selfish ambitions. Help us to reach out to our neighbors with love and compassion. Give us leaders that honor and follow you. Help them with a multitude of difficult decisions and judgments. 
cover the executive offices, legislative halls, and the courts of justice with your presence. Bless President Biden and his family. We commit Ukraine to your protection and care. Stop the evil and unprovoked attack on this nation. Help the Ukrainian military to defend and expel the invaders. Have mercy on the civilian population. Help them to find safety, food, and shelter. Use the worldwide, worldwide relief effort to bring aid to those within and without the national borders to quell this horrific crisis. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. In this horrible conflict, display your power and might. Bring peace to Ukraine. Once again, we ask a continual blessing for the Collins family. Care for needs. Empower Jeff to speak with clarity and passion in the delivery of that message you have placed on his heart and in his mind. We thank you for guiding his ministry here with us. Help each one of us, O oh Lord, to seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before you this week. O oh Lord, we pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And can we uh, turn off the pad? Um, we start. Let's uh, turn our hearts to the Lord once again as we uh, sing his praises. Um, first song we sing is actually, these are both in the hymnal, and if you're looking in the hymnal, 704, 705, if you like to uh, use the hymnal, you're welcome to do that. Uh, both of these are, are songs that were born out of pain and trials and suffering um, that, um, that God just brought an assurance to the writer of the song that, that he's still in control and that we're okay. That God works all things together for good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let's stand together and sing.
Turn our attention now to the scripture reading from Genesis chapter 40, <clears throat> and we're looking at verses 1 through 23, Genesis 40, uh, uh, beginning with verse 1. Now, some time later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended the master of the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who, had, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there's no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dream." So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream, and he said to him, In my dream I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. And as soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will, be, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to jo Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. 
In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. But the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all of his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to the position to that just as um, Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph and forgot him. May God give us understanding of his holy word. A son was looking to, a father was looking to teach his son to persevere, to, to, to uh, keep going, and not quit. And, and so he, he said to him, he said, son, you, you've got to keep on going, got to keep on keeping on, you've got to hang in there. Uh, when you look at great figures of history, it's because they, they were great because they hung in there. Uh, uh, look at Abraham Lincoln. He didn't quit. How about Thomas Edison? He didn't quit. Think about Douglas MacArthur. He didn't quit. Think about Elmer McCringle. His son says, Dad, who's Elmer, Elmer McCringle? The dad says, see, he quit. <laughs> Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate de delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Perseverance is persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Patience is, is passive. It's about attitude, about being at peace. It's what the psalmist calls for in Psalm 27, 14, where he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Perseverance, however, is active. It's about doing something to bring about positive results. It's reflected in Hebrews 12, where we are told to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Last week, we talked about Joseph's patience in the face of 13 years that he spent as a slave and as a prisoner. This week, I'd like for us to consider his perseverance, that we might also follow his example and that he might be an encouragement to us. Before we do that, let's bow our heads and our hearts for a word of prayer. Lord, we come to your word trusting in your word. We know that your word is good. We know that your will is good. We, we know that your word is true. We know that your word is lasting, everlasting not a, a jot or a tittle, not a dot or a stroke of a pen will disappear from your law until it's all accomplished. Lord, we trust in you. In the midst of a world that does not trust in you, in the midst of a world that mocks and, and, and that spurns your word, we pray as we come to your word, Lord, you would not only teach us, but that you would use your word to mold us and shape us. And even more than that, we pray that you would visit us through your word and enliven our hearts, for we know that your word is not just print on a page. It's not just words in a book. It's not just lists of rules. It's not just histories. Your word is living and active. And so we pray that you would use it to, to encourage, to direct, even to even to undo us, that you might remake us in your image. And we pray for the one who teaches, that you'd hide him behind the cross, that in this time we might see Jesus and him alone, for it is in his precious and powerful name that we pray. Amen. In 1973, the Supreme Court decision Roe versus Wade 
All the laws banning abortion in the United States were struck down in one fell swoop. For many of us, that has been the only atmosphere we remember. That court decision has held for nearly 50 years. There are still laws on the books in most states banning abortions at various stages, but they have been unenforceable because of Roe versus Wade. Throughout that time, there have been people who have made every effort to stop abortions. Every week, we see folks who stand in front of Planned Parenthood here in Dover. And on the day that they are doing abortions, they stand out there and they pray for people and they encourage people to, to spare their babies' lives. A New Day Pregnancy Help Center has worked to provide help and make the option of keeping a baby possible for those who have no other resources. Legislator, legislators have repeatedly attempted to put limitations on abortions. In 2018, here in Delaware, State Senator Bryant Richardson and State Represent, Representative Tim Dukes sponsored a bill called the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which called for a ban on abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy. The measure asserted that at 20 weeks, a fetus can feel pain and is viable. It can survive outside the womb. It should be protected. The bill stated that anyone who intentionally or recklessly performed an abortion in violation of the act would be guilty of a felony. It was a glimmer of hope, but it was struck down in committee. It never even made it to the floor to become law. Instead, Delaware has laws that not only allow abortions at any stage of pregnancy and in any form, we even allow women to have chemical abortions at home with a pill without any medical supervision. It's hard to persevere when it seems like you continue to lose ground. It's hard to keep on keeping on when it seems like everything is against you. And yet, that's what perseverance is all about. When your back is against the wall, when you've run out of options, you keep on fighting. When you're sure that what you're standing up for is right, you don't back down. You don't give up. As Winston Churchill said in an address to Harrow School on October 9, 1941, in the midst of World War II, never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. I'm reminded of the struggle that Paul and his companions endured in the province of Asia. And I don't know what exactly that, uh, that uh, uh, opposition was that they faced, but it was so overwhelming that they felt like they were going to die, to literally be put to death. And yet somehow, God brought them through it. They persevered, and then God taught them to trust him and to continue to persevere. This is what he writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. I was recently re-watching the movie Saving Private Ryan, and we see the troops as they land on the beaches on D-Day during World War II. And the, the machine gun fire is overwhelming. It seems to cut everywhere, and men are being cut down all, all around by machine gun fire, and it seems just an impossible task to take those beaches. And yet they persevere. They keep on keeping on. They, they regroup. They, they keep trying. They don't give up. And soon they take the beaches. They persevered. 
One of the scriptures, the verses of scripture that we have to memorize in our discipleship course is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And in that verse is a Greek word that's interesting because we translate it as temptation. But that word has a wider meaning in the Greek. It's temptation or testing or trials. It, it, it covers all of those. And so we read, no temptation, no testing, no trial has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. He will not let you be tested. He will not let you be tried beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, when you are tested, when you are tried, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Like Paul would later write, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. In the same way, we can only do what we can do. And that, that would be okay. I know that God would use that. But I think that often, the church doesn't choose to do what it could do. Instead, we hide our heads in the sand. We just hope that things will go away on their own because it's uncomfortable. It's, a, it's unnerving. People get pretty ugly when you oppose them. Now, almost 50 years after Roe versus Wade, versus Wade uh, due to a very unfortunate leak of the majority opinion on the pending case, Dobbs versus Jackson will, Women's Health, from all appearances, Roe versus Wade will be overturned. But that doesn't mean that abortion will just stop. It means that it's now up to the states to decide and to put laws into place regarding abortion. It means that it was never the jurisdiction of courts to create law on abortion, which is what Roe did. The creation of law is the duty of the legislature. Perseverance is still needed. You see, discouragement from overwhelming losses is not the only, only danger. Sometimes an apparent success can be just as much of a danger because we, we stop being diligent. We stop persevering. We lose ground all over again. So we must continue to be diligent. A 2017 Delaware law ensures that abortions will continue in Delaware even if Roe versus Wade is struck down. The Dobbs decision only reflects that the issue is not up to the courts, it's up to the legislature, and the legislature has acted to make sure that they guarantee abortions. I want you to know that you're going to have a special treat on the last Sunday in June, June 26th. Nicole Tice, the, uh, the president and founder of Delaware Family Policy Council and Delaware Strong Families, will be our guest preacher in our worship service. Nicole has been a, a, a champion for bringing gospel truth into the political arena in Delaware for the last 14 years. And yes, the gospel is needed there. The gospel is needed in the government. Politics is a mission field. And if followers of Christ do not speak out on the truth in the public arena, then we leave it for others, for the ungodly, for the unchristian, for those who do not follow the Lord, who don't know the truth, to decide what's right and true. And then we can only blame ourselves for the moral decadence that we see increasing more and more in our culture. We need to learn to speak the truth in love with grace and with confidence. We need to know the talking points and common ground that can foster dialogue with those whose views are in opposition to our own. And Nicole and her team can equip us in that way. But we need to persevere. To persevere. That means not sitting back and waiting and hoping that things will change, but taking the bull by the horns and working for change. Maybe you can't take a public office and a affect the system directly, then again, maybe you can, and maybe that's what God is calling you to, and maybe you should seriously consider it. But there are actions that all of us, every one of us can take here and now to bring about change. 
Do you know that Starbucks has just announced that they will pay travel expenses for anyone who works for them who wants an abortion if they have to travel more than 100 miles to get it? And they didn't do that quietly. They made it a public announcement, a public endorsement of abortion. They will now use those overpriced products that we buy to promote actions that we oppose. Do we still buy their coffee? Do we simply affirm this nonsense with every cup that we consume? Or do we send a clear message to the bottom line that we will not participate? Let's tell Starbucks that their business is coffee and we're not interested in buying abortions from them. Delaware has laws in place that make it illegal to prevent anyone from getting access to abortions. That's current law. That's anyone. And the schools apply this to minors who can be transported to an abortion clinic in the middle of a school day without the parent's knowledge or consent, never consulting the parents at all. And if the parents ask about it, the school will lie. That's policy. They consider that a practice of HIPAA that uh, the child has a right to their private privacy of their medical uh, records, even if the parents are paying the insurance that, that makes this happen. We need to speak to our legislators and encourage them to pass laws ensuring parental rights. You see, the battle is, is, is complicated by the fact that we're being assaulted on multiple fronts. Abortion is not the only issue. It blows our minds that things that we used to consider just common sense and scientific fact are now being questioned, and not only questioned, but undermined and demonized. Gender confusion is being promoted in our schools as teachers tell kids that they may or may not be what God made them. What they can visibly observe, what science affirms, people are born male or female. Binary. There are two options. People are born male or female. It's not a mistake. It's God's design. Science tells us that every cell in the human body, every cell in the human body is male or female. Every cell on the chromosomal level is, is indicated that way, male or female. That never changes. Even with hormone treatments or puberty blockers, they only mask the evidence. Even surgical changes only mask the evidence, but every cell in the body continues to be male or female. Yet school clinics are allowed to pass out puberty blockers and hormone, hormone treatments like they are candy, again, all without parent, parental consent or knowledge. These treatments can cause permanent damage and sterility. They block the natural process of puberty that allows a, a child to develop into a functioning adult. If a child decides that they want to be known by the opposite gender or no gender or a choice of 13 different genders, the school just gets behind it. They, they just assign that. And parents are never informed. In fact, it would be hidden from the parents. This is going on in our schools right now. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has come out publicly and said that every authority, every health authority, every psychological authority is in support of helping children transition to the opposite gender if they want it. That is spin. That is a lie on a colossal scale. The Amer American Pediatric Association has recognized that giving puberty blockers or hormone treatments for gender transitions to young children is child abuse. It causes permanent irre irreversible physical and psychological damage to children. Woke companies, those who promote the current cultural aberrations, are using their marketing power to promote just such things. I keep seeing, you probably see it too, a fitness watch commercial that features a transgender male dancing on a stripper pole, two lesbians kissing in the water on the beach, and more. What does that have to do with fitness? It's promoting an agenda 
And it's one that we need to persevere in speaking out against. It seems like every commercial you see nowadays has, it, it has to include at least one homosexual or transgender image. Disney. Disney. That we grew up loving. A childhood uh, fantasy. It, 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 wholesome stuff. Disney is using its influence on children to promote the LGBTQ plus ideas into the minds of young children. They're making that their policy, that a certain percentage, a majority of everything they do is going to include this kind of material. Parents have seen too much. Parents have begun to push back. Families are going as far as to cancel Disney vacations and cancel Disney Plus streaming services as a way of sending a message that Disney has gone too far. Governor DeSantis of Florida and the Florida legislature have revoked the independent status that Disney has had as its own municipality for its parks. Our children are not up for grabs. Amen? Amen. Target stores seem intent on proving this point. Several years ago, they made it clear that their bathroom policy would be whatever gender you felt like that day, you could go into that bathroom. So boys could use girls' rooms and girls could use boys' rooms if you go into a Target store. And Target will have no problem with that. And we have seen the result with several cases of young girls being assaulted in their restrooms. Now they're filling their racks with one invitation after another for young people to reject the bodies that God gave them. And they're selling things like chest binders to strap down breasts, compression underwear for boys, or packing underwear with a, with a bulge for girls. There are t-shirts with pronouns, baby onesies with my first pride written on them, and toddler tie-dyes that declare trans rights are human rights. They may be a target, but they have missed the mark. My family won't shop there. Well, yours? This is not the time for the church to hide out and hope that these things will just disappear and go away. It will only get worse. We were warned about these very things 40 years ago. We chose not to listen, and everything we were warned about, we are now living with. It only gets worse. This morning, I want to challenge you to persevere. Keep doing what is right. Stand up for what is right. Galatians 6, 9 tells us, tells us, let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. As we persevere, I want to encourage you this morning to do two things. Number one, educate yourself on the issues that we're facing today as a culture. And number two, take an action. One action. Take one action, one thing that you can do to influence this world for good. Educate yourself. You and I both know that the major news outlets have a very liberal slant and an agenda. And it's not a godly agenda. We don't always get the whole picture from them. And the picture we get is often skewed. I suggest you subscribe to a service that will give you commentary on current events from a Christian perspective, a biblical perspective. Tony Perkins of the Family Policy Council, the national organization, sends regular emails called the Washington Watch. Delaware Family Policy Council sends periodic updates about what's specifically happening in the state of Delaware. Al Mohler, the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, puts out a daily commentary called The Briefing, which you can get by podcast or you can, you can download the transcript for it. Subscribe to one of these by email, by podcast. Ed educate yourself. Continue to watch your, your current news sources, but keep a balanced perspective. Educate yourself. Then take action. Determine one thing. One thing, one step that you can take to positively influence our culture toward truth and righteousness. Write to your legislatures, le legislators. Tell them what you think about an issue, why they should vote that way. We have all kinds of issues right now that are moral issues, not legal issues. Assisted suicide, abortion issues, uh, issues of what's happening in our schools. These are all matters of morality. These are, these are matters that, that a biblical viewpoint needs to be, to be brought, brought to bear. 
The Family Policy Council of Delaware can be very helpful with this. Nicole Tice leads a, a monthly luncheon uh, briefing here in town where you can find some next steps. Attend the Life Rally on June 7th at 1 p.m. outside Legislative Hall. Send the message to legislators that just by being there, it sends a message that Delawareans support life. Stop shopping at Target or Starbucks or write to them and tell them why. Take action. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful people so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You can make a difference. You are called to make a difference. You are called to be salt and light in the world, to affect the world around you. Therefore, as Galatians 6, 9 tells us, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes we see all the stuff that is happening in our culture, in our nation, in our world, and it is overwhelming. But Lord, we're reminded that when the odds are against us, that when everything seems impossible, when it seems like all is lost, those are the odds that you love. Because you come in and you make the impossible happen. With you, all things are possible. And you get the glory that way. And we pray, Lord, that you would use us to stand up against the impossible odds that you might truly get the glory. We thank you for the glimmers of hope that we see. We thank you for the successes that we can measure when the truth has been publicly proclaimed, even if we don't get our way, that at least the truth is out there. We thank you for those who are, who are championing, championing the truth, people like Nicole Tice and Tony Perkins and, and Al Mohler and, and others that, that put their reputations on the line, that, that stand out, that speak out for for biblical truth. Help us to be those who support that, who speak that. Use us for your glory, Lord. This world is so corrupt, and it's no news to you, for your word tells us that there are none righteous, not one. And we recognize, Lord, that we participate in the corruption of our culture. We repent of that. We pray, Lord, that you would turn our hearts. And then... Because we ourselves, as sinners, have, have been shown your grace, help us to be graceful and loving to those who oppose us, who oppose your word, that they might see you, not so much in our arguments, not in our presentations or our information, but in the love that we show. Use us, Lord. Change this world. Pour out your spirit. Turn the hearts of those who oppose you back to you that all heaven might rejoice when sinners repent. You have done it before, Lord, and we know you can do it again. We know that in the end there will be a final battle, but in the meantime, Lord, we pray for your spirit to be poured out, that you would spare our nation and that you would turn hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bible tells us that we are to bless the Lord, to praise the Lord in all circumstances. When things are going great, we should praise the Lord. James says, is any one of you happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any one of you in trouble? You should pray. Is any one of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. In all circumstances, we are told to pray. We are told to give thanks to the Lord. And we, we wanted to end the worship service on that line, singing the very truth that, that the name of the Lord is to be blessed in the land that's plentiful, when everything's abundant and wonderful, and even when we're on the road that's marked with suffering. 
I invite you once again to stand and, and sing with us. Once we receive the benediction, I want to remind you once again that um, we'd invite you to stay for just a minute, that we might have a, a mission briefing together, a time to update each other um, on the ways that the Lord is, is uh, working among us and some of the progress that's being made. Um, so now let's receive the benediction. Create in us. A clean heart, O oh God, let us be like you in all our ways. Give us your strength 
Teach us your song, shelter us in the shadow of your wing. For we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves and live through your death, and we shall be born again to be blessed in your love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Those who are able to stay, we want to just have a little time of mission briefing. Just remind you again, a week from Sunday, that the deacons are getting the congregation together for a fellowship meal. And we're going to join together in our fellowship groups. Uh, the same people who have your deacon, uh, you're going to get together with. Um, some of you are going to get to know each other for the first time. And that's a good thing. It's a, a butt time. But we want to we um, encourage you that our shepherding groups are not just so that your deacons can take care of you, but so that they can help you to take care of each other, to minister to each other. And so we want to begin that process. We want to, uh, we want to encourage that fellowship within your shepherding group. So that's, that's what's happening the first Sunday in June at our potluck. And we hope you'll make that a plan, put that in your date book, take out your phone, put it in there um, so that it's, uh, so that you, it's in your mind and, and you're ready for it. We're seeing some some things begin to to gear up again, um, and and we're looking for ways to continue to do that, to grow, to to um, to provide some some teaching section, sessions for children uh, during the worship time at children's church type thing. We're kind of working on that, looking for some people that might bring that about, um, and uh, maybe God is calling you to do that. And I want to talk to Pam if uh, if that's you know, burning passion in your heart. And, and we're looking for people really not to do it every week. We, we don't want to see somebody just not be able to come into worship every week. We want some adults to be able to do it maybe once a month, maybe maybe twice a month or something like that. So uh, that's some of the stuff that's happening in the church itself. Um, but I know that God is working through the church as the church is out there in the world. And um, uh, so this is your time. How has the Lord been working through you. How have you seen the Lord at work around you this week? Susan? I'd just like to uh, say thank you, Pastor Jeff, for your righteous anger at what is going on. And we get, every day we get mad at things for nothing, but what is really important, we just close our eyes and close the ears. And uh, every day, uh, it is it is a struggle. And what is right and what is wrong. And, and when it's a pastor don't speak out, and then we feel, I guess it's okay. <laughs> you know, so we're just really grateful and are glad to, to see the pastor speak out for all of us. <laughs> Tori. I've had a not so great week this past week. I guess that was God's way of telling me to bring my horse back here. <laughs> that was because I was not in a very good spot. Monday, I almost got run over by a van on Monday. <laughs> just, and then every little thing after that just kind of snowballed into, well, and then my grandmother was like, come back to church. That's God's way of telling you, come back to church. I was like, all right, fine. You win. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> so I came back here, and I think I've got it. <laughs> I think I got it. God's telling me. Don't give up. You've got this. You have this. Just keep coming to church, you dingus. Do it! 
Good job, Maria. <laughs> We've been praying for you, you know. <laughs> it's wonderful that God has a way of, uh, of putting the bumpers, you know, <laughs> keep us going in the right direction. Sometimes, you know, when we hit the bumpers, it hurts. <laughs> Fortunately, you didn't hit the bumper on that van. So. <laughs> oh. God been blessed us with a gorgeous garden of horror flowers. I thought I'm going to cut down one or two plants, but oh my God, we can just put 14 bushes high biscuit along the uh, fence. We have both left and right fence. We in private, nobody feel built in front of us, behind us. We're just like, we can walk nature, <laughs> but they <it's> soon. <laughs> If you, if you need some uh, garden fill, she's the one to talk to. Actually, me too, because she's given me so much stuff, it's overflowing my yard. Um, this is sort of a human interest story. I've had this going through my head all weekend, and when that happens, I usually have to um, share with you guys. Um, I hope you can see the irony of what's going on. If you watch Fox News, you know that this country is in a very dire situation with baby formula. There is none. Um, when I went to the commissary and looked at the shelf, it was empty, and that was on the base. Um, back in 1847, A group of New York businessmen knew that a famine was going on in Ireland. And they got together and they made a commitment to send food to Ireland. At the end of the Second World War, Russia decided that they were going to starve the Germans. And they cut off all their supplies and, and, and all their routes to get supply. And President Truman said, I will not have this. And so the Berlin airlift began. And we fed the Germans for as long as it took. There was also a, a pilot, this is sort of a going down the rabbit's trail. But anyway, there was this pilot who made little parachutes and added candy to the parachutes. His name was Gail Haraldson. I think I pronounced that correctly. He was known to his fellow pilots as the candy bomber. To the German children, he was known as Mr. No. Uncle Wiggly Wings, because when he flew over, he tilted his plane so the children would know that that's where the candy was. And we fed them as long as it took. If you watched Fox News yesterday, you saw pallets of baby formula arriving from Germany to our country. This morning on the news, I saw where Ireland has sent baby formula to our country. Can you, can you, you know, God says to feed the hungry. Can you feel the irony of what is happening? Thank you for sharing that. Or you have been filled with God's spirit, the, the rivers of living water. And God fills you that it might overflow in all the places that you go. So go out into the world and leave wet footprints. Have a great week. God bless you.